Let's look at an example of vector addition. So for this particular example, let's say that we have a something on the ground and we have a couple of cables. One cable is going in this direction. And the magnitude of these fours is a thousand pounds. Let's call that F2. And the other cable is going in this direction over here. And let's say that the magnitude of that pound of that force is 700 pounds. So this F1 is 700 pounds. Perfect. Now we need some type of direction for these vectors, and the way to give direction is with, the, with some angles. So let's say let me change colors here really quick. We have some axes. Uh, this over here is going to be my x-axis. This over here is going to be my y-axis. And uh, what we're going to see is that the direction of those forces are such that um, the angle between F2 and the vertical, this is 60 degrees. And the angle of F1 and the horizontal is 70 degrees. So that is 70 degrees. All right, what we need to do, the question for this, is we need to calculate R, which is F1 plus F2. So it is the summation of those two forces. So what's my strategy? My strategy is first to take these two forces, F1 and F2, and convert them in Cartesian vector form. Once I have those vectors in Cartesian vector form, I can easily add them and, and provide the answer in Cartesian vector form as well. So my first step is I need to take these forces, F1 and F2, and express them in that Cartesian vector form. How do I do that? All right, let's take this F1. And what I'm going to do is draw F1 and the components of F1 in Cartesian vector form. So for F1, We have the following. So this is F1. You know the magnitude is 700 pounds. And we also know the angle that this creates with the horizontal. So this over here is going to be 70 degrees. All right. Now I have this triangle. And we know that the angle between those two dashed lines is 90 degrees. And that is useful because we have our x and, and y axis right here, right? So what I need to do is find the components of that force. What that means is I need to find this magnitude of this vector over here, the magnitude of this vector over here, right? This is going to be my, let's call it F1x, and this is going to be my F1, Y. Very good. So now I can use the angles, or that angle, to be able to answer that question. So from this uh, right angle, we know that my F1, F1X is going to be equal to the magnitude, which is 700 pounds, times the cosine of 70. Now notice something. I have this is only the magnitude of that F1x. I'm going to add this sign because in the opposite direction of x when I write my, my Cartesian vector form. And uh, that gives me my F1x is 231 uh, through 39.4 pounds. All right. And uh, my F1y is going to be 700 sine of 70. F1y is equal to 657.8 pounds. Okay, so I have four significant figures, intermediate calculations, I have units in those two, we're good. What that means is that my F1 vector 
now we know that F1 in Cartesian vector form is going to be equal to minus 239.4i plus 657.aj bounds. Okay? Where does that negative came from? Again, it's because of the direction of this F1x. It is going in the opposite direction of your x-axis, so it, this needs to be negative. All right, so we have one of those vectors in Cartesian vector form. Let, let's do F2. Or F2. What do we get? Uh, all right, we have F2. The, 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 the triangle is different, right? So the triangle for that is going to be something like this. This is my vector F2, and the magnitude is 1,000 pounds. This angle is 60 degrees, and my F2x and F2y are actually like in this location. So this one over here is going to be F2y. This one over here is F2x. All right, so based on this triangle, based on this triangle, we can tell that my F2x is the magnitude, which is a thousand pounds. We're looking at the opposite of the angle, so that will be the sine of 60 degrees. And doing those calculations, I get 166. 0 pounds, right? And my F2y is going to be 1,000. In this case, we're looking at the adjacent to that to the angle, so that will be cosine of 60. And so F2y will be equal to 500 pounds. So my F2 vector in Cartesian vector form is going to be equal to, okay, let's see, this one is going in the same direction as X, so it will be 866.0i. This one is also going up, which is the direction of my Y vector, plus 500j bounce. Okay, all right, we have F1, we have F2. Now all we need to do is to add these two vectors, right? So we have one expressing Cartesian vector form here, another one in Cartesian vector form right here. We need to add those two vectors. I'm going to do it here in this side of the board. So I have that my R. I need to take my, now that, that these two numbers, the 239.4 and the 866.0, are going in the same direction. Now I can add them together. So and that is in the direction of the x-axis, right? So we need to multiply that by that unit vector i. So this will be 866 minus 239.4i plus the same thing for the other direction, so 657.8. plus 500 J, and that will be in pounds. So my answer will be 627 I plus 1160 J pounds. Now this is my final answer. I'm using three significant figures to express this answer. So to summarize, uh, I took each of those vectors, expressed each vector in Cartesian vector form, and uh, at the end, I added those two vectors to find my resultant. Now, I want you to notice something. Notice that in this equation, my x component is using the cosine, 
in this equation my x component is using the sign what that means is that you really need to look at each individual case and make the decision of what is the equation that is appropriate for that case that is not something that you can necessarily memorize and always use the sign and the cosine right in the case is the cosine because the x is is touching that angle right so it's the adjacent in this case is the sign because the x is opposite to the angle.